Hello viewers! Welcome back to the Pathfinder Lair. About a month ago, I did a video on what I thought Pathfinder 2E's main problems were and how to solve them. You can check out that video in the card. In keeping with that video, today I'm going to be ranking every single Pathfinder 2nd Edition class in terms of how well they work with other classes. I will start with the bottom and work my way up. Let's get right into it, shall we? Keep in mind, this ranking is strictly my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion down in the comments. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments or on my social media. Links are in the description. I know a lot of you guys aren't going to like this, but I have to give the monk a 1 out of 10 on teamwork. Why? Well, the monk is simply a defensive damage dealer. Like every class on this list, it can definitely take advantage of the teamwork abilities of other classes. The problem is, it gives almost nothing back in that regard. The base stances do almost nothing to help the party, and the feats that require the stances do very little as well. Even the key spells do very little to help the party. The monk does have some good grapple feats, but the problem is, is that there's another class that does the grappling thing so much better. Those of you that have played the system know exactly which class I'm talking about. I will rank that class later in this video. The next class on this list is one of my favorites from Pathfinder 1, so I'm really sad that I have to rank it this low, but I do. The Oracle gets a 2 out of 10 on teamwork. The Oracle is just a worse cleric when it comes to teamwork. The Ancestor's Mystery Benefit is the only one that might help the party, and even then it depends on what ancestry you are. Also, the curse aspect of the class can make it very difficult to work as a team with you. Most of their feats do nothing to help the team. The only thing that saves the Oracle from being worse than the Monk is their spells. The Divine List is a great teamwork spell list. It has healing, buffs, debuffs, and some attacking spells. Some of the focus spells are even good for teamwork. Unfortunately, all these good things don't make up for the curse aspect of the class. The party has to deal with your curse, and that makes it very hard to work with you, as some of the curses are really bad. Now let's talk about the fighter class. Come on, if you played this system, you knew that fighter was going to be low on this list. Fighter gets a 3 out of 10 when it comes to teamwork. Where the fighter excels is in having a bunch of different ways to help the party, but they're never going to be as good at helping the party in specific ways as other classes. The fighter was built to be a damage dealer, and that's what they are. The investigator is interesting because it has a different ranking on this list depending on what type of campaign you are in. If you are in a mystery-based campaign, then the investigator gets a 9 out of 10 on teamwork. Yes, it is that good at figuring out mysteries. However, if you are not in a mystery-based campaign, then it gets a 4 out of 10. If you are not in a mystery-based campaign, you're going to use the abilities of the investigator very little. The wizard gets a 5 out of 10 when it comes to teamwork. Almost all wizard abilities help them in some way with their spells. So how good it is in a team setting depends on what spells you pick for them. The Sorcerer gets a 5.5 out of 10. People always forget about the Blood Magic abilities, but some of them are really good for helping the party out. But like the Wizard, much of their teamwork potential depends on what spells you give them. The Druid gets a 6 out of 10 when it comes to teamwork. The Primal Spell List can be great for helping the rest of your party. With their spells, druids can heal, do damage to a large amount of enemies, and even enter melee combats. Their feats and abilities also allow for great support. This is why druid is one of my favorite classes in Pathfinder 2e. However, they do not have much buff and debuff potential. Also, again, their teamwork potential depends on what spells you prepare. The cleric gets a 6.5 out of 10 on teamwork. They are the best healer in the game, and one of the best buffers in the game. But they can't do a whole lot of damage unless they're harmful fonts, or they're going up against undead. Unfortunately, about 80% of the time, they just end up being heal bots. And that's it. Not that that's a bad thing, but still. 
I'm giving the witch a 7 out of 10 when it comes to teamwork. Their hexes are very good at buffing and debuffing, and they can hit multiple enemies at once over a number of rounds. They can also be very good conjurers, which gives the enemy more targets to deal with. But like most spellcasters, their teamwork potential depends on what spells you give them. I also give the champion a 7 out of 10. Good champions are very good at teamwork. Evil champions are not. If you want to be a tank to protect weak characters like spellcasters, then champions are for you. If they take the right feats, champions can even protect others with their shield. Also, almost every champion feat available helps the party in some way. The only problem with champions is that they can't do much damage. That's why they're further down on this list than other classes. I give the Barbarian a 7.5 out of 10. They are fantastic grapplers, and that can really help a party, especially if they're going up against spellcasters. But most of the instincts are just damage dealers, and that's it. I'm especially looking at you, giant instincts. The Bard is the best teamwork spellcaster in the game. I give them an 8 out of 10 on teamwork. The occult spell list is fantastic. It's got healing, it's got buffs, it's got debuffs, it even can do damage. It's fantastic. And it's not just the occult spell list. Bards also have amazing teamwork focus spells. Even bard feats are amazing for teamwork. The only reason bard isn't higher on this list is because other classes have more versatility. Next is the swashbuckler. I give them an 8.5 out of 10. Almost all the ways that a swashbuckler can gain panache also help the party. Also, the swashbuckler has incredible teamwork feats, especially the finishers. It outpaces Bard in versatility on the finishers. And that's saying a lot. <laughs> the ranger also gets an 8.5 out of 10. Not only is the ranger a great damage dealer, but it can also give bonuses to their allies. Whether it's their Hunter's Edge bonus, or just static bonuses when they identify monsters. They're all great. Also, if you know when an encounter is coming, they're the best snare setter in the game. Their animal companions can even help flank, whether it's with you or your party members. And now we come to the home stretch. The Alchemist gets a 9 out of 10 when it comes to teamwork. Alchemists have so many items that help the party, it's actually ridiculous. Something that most people forget about is that mutagens can be given to your other party members. Bombs and poisons can debuff enemies. Alchemists can make elixirs that work very similarly to spells, just not as powerful. The only reason that Alchemist isn't number one on this list is because of the Trojan. There are just better healers out there. I mean, even an oracle is better at healing than the Trojan. If you haven't figured out what the top class on this list is, it is the Rogue. I give the Rogue a 9.5 out of 10. The Rogue has so many skill increases and skill feats that it's very easy to build your Rogue around teamwork. Rogues can very easily debuff enemies and are amazing out of combat. Their class feats are also incredible for teamwork. But what really sets the Rogue apart is how easily they can take advantage of what other classes can do. Other classes can definitely take advantage of what, uh, what other classes can do, but the rogue takes it to a whole new level. Got an occult spellcaster in the party? A darkness spell is literally a playground for a rogue with dark vision, especially if the enemies don't have dark vision. Almost every class in the game can make an enemy flat-footed, and flat-footed equals sneak attack for rogue. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on. It's actually ridiculous. Some classes can even shore up a rogue's defenses, which are already ridiculous. And that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more Pathfinder 2nd Edition content. You can also check out my social media. If you want exclusive perks, check out my Patreon page. Links are in the description. And until next time, let's play some Pathfinder.